Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness, Keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, 
may cheerfully accomplish those things which thou hast commanded us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Holy, Gospel, uh, uh, Holy Scriptures. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah in the 52nd chapter, beginning at the 7th verse. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God ran. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together. Ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The song is number 147 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 522. Psalm 147, Book of Common Prayer, page 522. Praise the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises unto our God. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He healeth those that are broken in heart. He telleth the number of the stars. Great is our Lord, and great is his power. The Lord setteth up the meek. O sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Who covereth the heavens with clouds and prepareth rain for the earth, and maketh the grass grow upon the mountains and the herb for the use of men? Who giveth father unto cattle, and feedeth the young ravens that call upon him? He hath no pleasure in the strength of a horse, neither delight in any man's legs. But the Lord's delight is in them that fear him, and put their trust in his Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise the thy God. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As it was as the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the opinion. The epistle is written in the Blessed Apostle Paul's second letter to Timothy, and the fourth chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescent to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is a profitable to me for the ministry. In Titius have I sent to Ephesus, the cloak that I left at Troas with Tarsus, when thou comest, bring with thee in the book, but especially the parchment. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his work, of whom be thou for us also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Here in the epistle. Please rise for the gospel. The gradual hymn is number 377.
he sent forth other servants saying, saying, Tell them which I have bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fattings have killed, <clears throat> and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. They made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entered them, and treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up thy city. Then he said unto his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore unto the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, but many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. on this uh, beautiful morning. Uh, glad to have you with us. First of all, I want to say thank you to the people that came yesterday for uh, the cleanup and work day. We got an awful lot done. I think the outside of the church and, and, and the inside looks great. We are uh, getting ready for the bishop, the bishop's visit early in November. Uh, as part of that, just so that uh, everybody understands when they go up back to the memorial garden, we're uh, cleaning up that area as well. And so if you had flowers or 
functions, I think, for uh, the month of October and we're getting ready for the month of November. Um, we will continue with our uh, education, uh, Acts of the Apostles at 9 o'clock between the two services in the parish hall. Uh, children's Sunday school starts after, before the sermon and, and finishes up after we get uh, the children to come back for communion. And then I will do the, uh, uh, the confirmation class today. Father Robert's not with us, so I'll, I'll pick up for him and we'll do the confirmation class in the uh, chapel right here uh, shortly after we get done the 10 o'clock mass. Give it about 10 minutes. For those of you that are on following us, that are in the neighborhood, but you are what doing it virtually, we will also uh, take about 10 to 15 minutes after the service and have one of the priests out in the, uh, the front of the church. And if you want to drive by and receive communion and a blessing, we're happy to do that for you. Uh, so uh, we'll be out there. We'll continue to do that until we get through the COVID process. The uh, month of November will be a little different because of the bishop's visit. We have the synod coming up uh, the week of the September 7th through September 14th. It'll be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at Dickey in Mississippi. Um, I still need a lay delegate. Um, there's some assistance that is available to help somebody get you know, a phone, uh, a plane, and hotel uh, covered if they would like to come. So if you have an interest in being a lay delegate, please come and talk to me and I'll make sure that we find a way to, to get you there. That means that the second Sunday, which would be when we normally have our vestry meeting, will be the bishop's visit. He'll be doing confirmations on that day, so we will not have a vestry meeting that day. We'll push the vestry meeting to the following week uh, after the 10 o'clock service. We will do the work day, the third Saturday, you know, as we are doing it normally. And is there anything else, Carolyn, that I'm missing? Yes. Yes. Well, we'll have a quick parish life meeting today just to lay out what we have to be doing for the bishop's visit and for cookie walk. It has to be short because we're doing the reception for our son and his bride today. I can't stay for a long meeting. But um, the plan for the first bishop's dinner, which will be Saturday night, the 13th, I believe, um, I'm going to do it the chicken crock pot dish that I always make, and I'll ask parishioners to make side dishes and desserts. We will have a nice um, meeting with Bishop Garcia. That's all I have. Yeah, he's a very sweet man, uh, very kind and gentle. If you, you know, I'm sure few of you have had a chance to meet him, but he's actually been with us for quite a long time. And I think you'll enjoy meeting him, a uh, good and holy man. The sermon hymn is number 375. Please rise.
bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are a couple of gospel passages which are terrifying, and of all of those passages, this might be one of the most terrifying. It seems like we have God portrayed by Jesus as a terrible and capricious judge who is willing to condemn this man into the outer darkness and the terrible suffering of hell just because he didn't show up to the wedding in the right garment. He had a fashion faux pas, and as a result, he is going to be consigned to hell. This isn't exactly the purpose of the gospel, and it is not to cast God in this light so that we fear him and we fear his judgment. But it is set up for us to understand what it is important to God, and that's really the purpose of this gospel for us to understand that God does care what we do and that what we do is going to be judged and that we need to have care with the way that we live our lives. Particularly, this gospel is written to help those of us, myself especially included, who like to think about all the loopholes of the law. And that's what this is about. I mean, really, Jesus is saying, God judges the spirit of the law. He judges your intention. And don't think that if you are, you know, living at the fringe of the law and that you're able to rationalize for yourself your behavior, that that's going to be okay with God. That no, your heart has to be right. And your heart has to be open to correction when it is not. The first part of this gospel seems to be easy to understand, right? You have these men who will not come to the king's wedding for his son. And consequently, you know, he is living with them. And one of the groups that he sends them to actually beats and murders his servant. So he punishes that group by sending his army and burning their city to the ground. Easy. This is pagans. This is people that worship golden calves. This is the most terrible people in the Old Testament that harassed and murdered the Jews. And so this doesn't really apply to us because we're all here in church today. And we have no golden calves. But the truth is that this is very much
Sunday mornings. And, you know, we had Claire at a, at a Girl Scout camp up that went through Sunday morning, even though the, the Scouts take the pledge that they are you know, going to be organized under God. Our society, our culture, even right here, is organized in such a way these days that if you're going to try and be true to your responsibilities to your family, that you're going to have difficulty in managing your responsibilities to put God first and to set aside this holy day for his purpose and for his worship and to be thankful for the blessings that he puts in our lives and to take the opportunity to ask for the blessings that we need. And Jesus says to us, it still counts. Even though you can rationalize that there's something else that brings us to this other terrifying passage, right? The guy with the fashion faux pas. Why would he be tossed out? Well, the answer is because we don't really understand the nature of the wedding feast in first century Jerusalem. The king would have provided the wedding gowns, the wedding garments for all of the guests, not just for his daughter or for the groom or for the wedding party, but everybody that came would have been given a new suit and would have been invited to come in. This is you know, such a, a joyous event and it's an opportunity for the, the parents of the bride to really lavish upon their friends in the community uh, the graciousness and the gifts from their, uh, from their livelihood and from the wealth that they've been blessed with. And so all of the wedding garments Runs this man, he doesn't say, why did you come without a garment? He says, why did you come in without a garment? Why didn't you just take the time to put it on? It was right there. And this for us is a reminder that, that we too need to put on the garment, especially when we are getting ready to come to the feast. So what is it that that garment is in our lives? Well, that garment in our lives is the legacy of our baptism, you know, the new man which we put on us when we are baptized, which we affirm when we have our confirmations. That is what we are supposed to be putting on. That's the wedding garment, and it's here. And how are we supposed to wear that garment? We wear it by being kind to each other. The second great commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. And when we come to communion and we haven't put on that garment, when we haven't lived our lives putting our own needs and our own desires behind the needs of the people that God has placed in our lives, and we are not living charitable and kindly lives in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, then we are showing up at the feast unprepared, undressed, and unworthy. That's, again, what Jesus is reminding us, that, <clears throat> that the, the blessing of the Eucharist is offered for us. We're called to the feast of the marriage of his son and his church. All the blessings are there waiting for us. And all we have... 
we will be blessed. But if we will not do that, there's no amount of rationalization that will excuse us when we have to make account of our lives before God. So let's take the opportunity to hear this passage, not to be terrified by it, not to make God out to be some capricious and unjust and ruthless judge, but to understand that our regular code of life rationalize our behavior doesn't wash with God. That our intentions and our hearts are going to be judged and we need to do what's important to Him. To love Him with all our heart and mind and soul and to show that love by loving our neighbors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
special intention for you, my friends, that you will open your heart and wear the garments of, of, of what's the, the garments of righteousness as you come in to receive the body and blood of Christ. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Ye who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our own manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and we're heartily sorry for these our misdoings, in remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Starfish Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in news of life, through the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great, great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those 
with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in his eyes. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there, by his one oblation of himself once offer, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy, we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death, death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we most earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins 
and all other, all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with grace and thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made but one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins, we offer unto thee uh, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardon thee our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be to thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay in our daily bread, and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so that eat the fresh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body. Our soul washed with his most precious blood, that we may dwell in him and he in us. Amen. I will receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, and speak word only in my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, and speak word only in my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, and speak word only in my soul shall be healed.
pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thou dost vouchsafe to feed us with duly receive these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. We are very members and corporate by the midst of body of thy Son, which is also the best of the people, and are also heirs who hopes and heirs of the and death of this most precious God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.
enjoy with us and have some refreshments and conversation and